The theologian Jonathan Edward writes that in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 8, the apostle tells us that God is love. He says, and therefore seeing that he is an infinite being, it follows that God is an infinite fountain of love. Seeing as he is an all-sufficient being, it follows that he is a full and overflowing and inexhaustible fountain of love. Seeing as he is an unchangeable and eternal being, God is an unchangeable and eternal source of love. There in heaven dwells that God from whom every stream of love, yes, every drop that is or ever was, proceeds. So your God is love and you are loved. I'm going to read 1 John chapter 4 verses 9 and 10. If you want to follow in your Bible, please pause the video now. 1 John chapter 4 verse 9 This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world, that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us, and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. The God who is love showed his love, gave his love, poured out his love on us. And whether you are familiar with church or not, most of you will know uh, how he showed that love, because the symbol of our Christian faith is a cross. God showed his love for us by sending his son Jesus to die for us, crucified on a cross. How is it that God loves you and shows his love for you? Verse 10, he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. God poured out his wrath against human sin on God the Son. And Jesus, God the Son, bore God's wrath in your place. Because it was your sins that Jesus bore, your wrath that Jesus suffered, your sins that needed atoning for. Jesus faced the consequences instead of you. John Murray says, God did not withhold one whit of the full toll of judgment. The strokes fell upon his son in unrelieved intensity with all the weight due to the sins he bore. You are loved. John, 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1 says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. The God of the universe loves and values human beings. He gave them great dignity and worth. And the good news is that we are saved, not by our own efforts, not by our own merit, but by what God has accomplished for us at the cross. And he adopts us. We become his children, his special treasure, the apple of his eye. Now that might be familiar to you, seem obvious to you, if you attend a church. Sometimes it can be so obvious that we almost take it for granted. But don't let that happen, because the wonder of it the reality of it, the truth of it, is almost too good to be true. Do you ever read your Bible or listen to a sermon and something stops you in your tracks? Something amazes you? It sounds just that, almost too good to be true. Let me give you an example. In 1 John, sorry, in John uh, chapter 17, verses 22 and 23, uh, Jesus says this to God the Father, I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you 
have loved me. You have loved them even as you have loved me. How much does God love you? Think of heaven, that place of love. The God who is full, overflowing, an inexhaustible fountain of love. Think of the love the Father has shown his Son from all eternity, has poured out on his Son from all eternity, that the Son has received for all eternity. The infinite love between Father and Son, the inexhaustible love between Father and Son and Holy Spirit. And God the Father loves you like that. He loves you like he loves his son. You have loved them even as you have loved me. It seems incredible. Too good to be true. But it is. This is how a preacher called Charles Spurgeon described his amazement at this truth. Get the thought into your head a minute, he says. God loves me, not merely bears with me, thinks of me, feeds me, but loves me. Who is it that loves you? God, the maker of heaven and earth, the almighty, all in all. Does he love me, even he? If all men and all angels and all living creatures that are before the throne love me, it was nothing to this. The infinite loves me. And who is it that he loves? Me. He loves me, an insignificant nobody, full of sin, who deserves to be in hell, who loves him so little in return. God loves me. Your God is love. And you are loved. But perhaps right now you don't feel loved. Perhaps right now you feel unlovable. But like all of us, you want to know love, the love that all of us ache for. May I encourage you to look to the cross and keep on looking, keep on seeking the God of love until you see and you know that God is love, and you, even you, are loved. Let's pray. Almighty God, as we think of the cross, we can only begin to grasp the unfathomable wonder of your love for us. You love us as you love your dearly beloved Son. We are your beloved and you are our God. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen.